Coke bottles are soaring right now. They are super hot. We're going to look at some. We're going to point out what to look for in these, and we're going to show you what they sell for as well. Hey, it's Don. Today we're talking about Coke bottles. We're going to show you some examples out of our own personal inventory and collection. We're going to show you what to look for. We're going to point out the details that make a good bottle as well. The prices for vintage Coke bottles are soaring. They're super hot right now. There's a lot of money to be made in Coke bottles right now. If you know which ones to grab, which ones to sink your money into, you're going to make a lot of money. Now this is a Hutchinson bottle. This is one of the earliest ones. This dates to around 1890s through about 1907. That's when these stopped being made. Uh, this one actually comes from Yazoo City Bottling Works in Mississippi. Now this one came out of the ground. I actually was there when this one was found. Um, and this one has some maker's marks on it. It has an ACW, which is actually who made this one here. The first release of Coke came in one of these. Most of these earlier factories, like this Yazoo City Bottling, also pressed Coke bottles. Many people like to collect Hutchinson from all of the different areas of factories that actually made Coke bottles. So these are highly, highly collected. As I said, they phased them out in 1907. Now here's a straight-sided bottle. This would be the next step after the Hutchinson bottle, and this would date from around 1900 through 1920. Everywhere I've gone or lived, we have acquired bottles from local areas, whether we've dug them out of the ground or we had to buy them. This is one we've had for a little while this is from Jacksonville Florida now this one has a mold line these were all done one by one in a wooden mold you can see the mold line right there it stops right here at the top so you can tell that this piece is separate right here this one also has script coca-cola on the bottom as would be expected this one has an applied top this part was applied by a machine from here on down was molded in that blow mold so you can kind of determine age and style and such forth by looking at those factors other bottles such as this straight sided one here are a little later the mold seam goes all the way up through the top of it as you can see so it's a, literally a two-piece mold with no attachment needed it's a later one this one comes from meridian mississippi i actually dug this one out of the ground myself at one of the bottling plants in the city you can see on the bottom property of coca-cola bottling company there's the script and you can see the bottom as well fairly nice here nice script coca-cola on the bottom now, now here you can see comparisons from an early Pepsi bottle. This is a straight-sided Pepsi bottle from about 1905-1910 from Columbia, South Carolina. Pepsi as well. So you can easily see the difference in style and shape of Coke bottles versus most of the other ones. Coke bottles were usually the shorter, the stubbier looking ones. Now here's another one by the Newton Bottling Works in Newton, Mississippi. This is another one that I personally took out of the ground. You can still see I left some dirt in there. This was also a Coca-Cola bottling factory. They did Coke bottles here. We found Coke bottles right next to these, believe it or not. What's interesting about this one is the mold was messed up. It had some issues and you can see some mold cracks or something to the wood itself. These are cracks in the mold. That's fairly interesting in my book. Doesn't add a ton to the value, but still, it's rather interesting. Now, color of the bottle can vary also. You have a very nice aqua one right here, and then just the standard light-colored version of the same exact bottle. These are basically identical bottles. Now, these are from a local manufacturer here. These were dug out of the ground as well. Here in Ohio, in the Toledo area, this is the Toledo Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Lots of nice hearts. It doesn't say a beverage brand, but this is definitely an early Coke bottle. It has a designation on it. The bottle Bottom says Scott, which I believe is one of the local uh, factories around here. There's a very well-known Scott family in here, so I'm assuming that's what it is. Now, some people prefer the deeper bluer aqua one versus the lighter colored one. Many times, this darker one here will sell for more than this one. Most of the bottles I've already shown you should get me at least 100 bucks or better on the open market. In many cases, like the straight-sided Coke bottles, the better the condition they are, the more they will sell for something like this here. I could get 125 It just depends. eBay is not the only source. There are soda bottle sales and shows also. Now, 
1915, Coca-Cola patented this contoured bottle here. Though these are patented in 1915, they actually started to roll out in about 1916 through 1928. Most of them have a city on the bottom. Now, many people assume that the city on the bottom of these is where they were actually made. That is usually not the case. This is where they were meant to be sold. This is the market that they belonged in. That's the patent date you're looking for there to tell when this was made. So if it has a 1915 patent date, it was made up through 1928. Now, one more thing to look for on the heel of the bottle here, there is some text. This is helpful for you to determine when it was made. It has a C-H-A-T-T -T for Chattanooga Glass Company, and then it has the number 27. That 27 will date this bottle till 1927. It doesn't necessarily have to be here. Sometimes it's here in this area. Sometimes there's little numbers written in certain other areas on the bottle as well. But a patent date is just the date it was patented. It wasn't the date it was made. This is the date this bottle was made. There's actually a very good book I would recommend. I'll try to include a link down below so you could check it out yourself. It's called The Coke Bottle Checklist by Bill Porter. That book shows pretty much every known example of all the city and early Coca-Cola bottles you could imagine. Now the next version of this bottle came out in about 1928 and it will have a patent date of 1923 on it. That bottle will have run to 1938. In 1938, this bottle would have been released. And this one has the patent number on it of 105529. What's also interesting, this one has a date on it too. Let's see if you can see it right there. So there's the date on this one of 1948. A majority of the ones we run into do have a date of some sort on them. So here's a couple of six ounces. The next version that came out, what's different on these is there is no patent date on them. If there's no patent date like this one here, and it says six ounces, this will date this one to 1951 through 58. It actually has a date code here on the side of 1955. There's a 55 right there. A good chunk of these will have a city name on the bottom. As I said earlier, the city name doesn't necessarily mean that's where it was made. That's where it was made to be released is what that usually means. This one is from Columbus, Mississippi. Another one here from Philadelphia, Mississippi. Now we scoured all over trying to find specific cities when we lived in the area. So this is just a couple other examples. We've got hundreds and hundreds of bottles in all honesty. So I just grabbed a few to show you. Now if the bottle had said six and a half, ounces that would date this till after 1958 the six and a half ounce bottles ran from 1958 through 1965 the value on most of these sorts is determined by the city marking on the bottom in most cases or any other factors there are some varieties where some of the textual references on the bottle are incorrect or stamped on the bottle wrong so there are some varieties there are some better ones worth looking out for now, some things to think about when you're buying these bottles, too. You can see this ring here. That is caseware from this setting in a wooden case or a crate of some sort. Now, it also has caseware up here where it would have sat. So the areas that the bottle would have been turned and moved around in are where the glass was ground down. And you can see the, the damage, basically, on it. The better the bottle, the better condition, the more it's going to be worth. Always check it out for any types of issues. Chips up there, chips on the bottom as well, or anything like that. Now, other things to look for are like little bullseye in it. I don't know how well you're going to see this, but this was hit at some point. It's got a little tiny fracture in there. It's still complete. It's still all there. There's no missing pieces. Now, it still will sell for decent money, but that is damage. Now, you also find air bubbles. That's expected on the earlier bottles. The earlier they are, usually the more air bubbles I will find. There's another one. Sometimes what you also find are what's called blowouts, where the top part that's covering one of these air bubbles is broken out and you can see that there's an indent into the glass, basically a little hole. Now this bottle has a lot of air bubbles in it. These were hand blown into a mold. So you can see a real big one there. As you turn it, there's a whole bunch more. There's some more here. There's another one there and it runs the gambit all the way across the bottle. That is expected and that is not considered damage at all. Let's look at some that actually sold and show you as well some of the values these go for. So here's just a few examples to give you an idea on some of the prices that some of these can go for. I've seen some Coke bottles, real rare ones, go for $10,000 plus. 
right now they're super hot you can see the price in this one almost eighty five hundred dollars very nice example very clean well taken care of still has the stopper and the whole works this would date prior to 1907 probably about 1890 to about 1907 on this one Here's just another example from Alabama, Tuskegee. Same basic principles, same everything else. As you can see, it went for a lot of money. Most of the earlier Hutchinson bottles are from the South, like the Yazoo City bottle that I showed you. Here's a nice one from Birmingham again. They're selling into the thousands and thousands of dollars. They're hot right now. This is one of the hottest times I have seen them. Now here's a Bidenharn, which is the creator of Coke, but this isn't technically a Coca-Cola bottle. It doesn't have any of the Coke logos on it. $585 for this one. So regardless, it's still sold for some good money. Four and ones go for some good money. They're scarce. Not many four and ones made their way to an area over here. A lot of them were probably recycled, trashed, broken, thrown away. 500 plus dollars on this fine example from the Republic of Panama. Here's another four and one here from Port Arthur, Ontario. That's up in Canada. This is an interesting one. It has a different shape, similar in size and construction to many of the earlier Pepsi bottles from the same time. Still went for $550. Here's another real nice straight sided one, $525. The better the condition, the higher they will sell. Tip top mint case fresh bottles go for a lot of money these days. Most of them are worn down or have issues with them. And here's an interesting 1915 patented model, a thousand bucks on this contoured one. This one's a little different though. This one has an error in it. Just like printed cards or coins or something, a mint error, this is a factory error. Somebody inverted the date, so instead of saying 1915, it looks like 1615. It's upside down, basically. It's something you will find, it adds a ton to the value. It's one reason I look at every single early bottle very closely to try and determine if there's anything else interesting on it. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. That's the way it is.